E adesso io do il benvenuto a Katarina e Morten. Potete, you can come on the stage with me. I'm going to switch in English. I hope it's not a problem for you guys, but you know, Italians, they don't speak a lot of English, but here everybody speaks English. We made the first check for them. So, Katarina, you can take uh, your microphone, please. So, first of all, thanks for being here, guys. So, we, before somebody said, okay, connected cars are quite far from the, you know, independent aftermarket. It's something that's more connected with OEMs. But first of all, I really like this uh, slide I wish to show you because uh, when they sent me their presentation from the companies, I was really caught by this, the first one. Cars are talking, are you listening? Are we listening to those cars? Are we able to listen to those cars? Katarina, are you listening to those cars in your company? Yes, so we are already listening to the cars uh, already since quite a while, actually. It's always surprising a lot of people what is already possible, what is already capable. Um, and 2020, at the beginning of 2020, there were two manufacturers, three brands live with car data. And now we are at 23, soon 26 uh, brands. I think we, have, we are very close to reaching a, a complete coverage of the most important volume manufacturers. Uh, and that's very exciting because now we can slowly start working to really scalable and sustainable solutions in, in many different directions as well as aftermarket. So that's a really important, guys, because we are talking with people which are handling those car data every day. It's something that we always think, okay, maybe legislation will be important to let us having the opportunity to touch somehow those data, but you are having a lot of data from your cars you are connected with. What kind of data? Um, it's, yeah, I think you can see quite a uh, big variance. It can go from simple data such as odometer to complex data such as trouble codes, uh, service times, uh, EV information in terms of charging, battery, um, really most of the things you can think of and we keep getting more data, there's uh, crash information coming now, um, driver behavior data is getting better and better, the frequencies are better uh, and of course once we have gone live with, with most of the manufacturers then uh, we can start really uh, building some exciting and innovative projects. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times you know, people say okay but there is important uh, kind of uh, firewall, let's call it, which is the privacy. A lot of drivers, they need to be aware, of course, if they are sharing or not the data. Technically, they are called controllers of the data. That's correct? So from my point of view, what is important to know if people is able to see that they are connected with your company as well once you connect with their cars? Yes. So that's uh, the most important part of being in this connected industry that you take GDPR or data protection very seriously because we're dealing with information that can um, have big impacts. If you can see where the car is located every night, you know where a person lives, for example. Um, but there are also data points that are not so um, person specific, I would say, such as the service times, for example. This doesn't really have any impact on a person or on the privacy data. Um, but either way, uh, the, the person who owns the vehicle should always be informed and have the knowledge uh, that the vehicle is connected. Uh, and if it's their own car of a private person, they have to even confirm the data points that um, they are sharing with service providers or uh, companies in general. Yeah. So for what I understand, you are able to, you know, to see and to have all those data from the OEMs. But there is anything that blocks you in terms of contracts, for example, to share data which are connected, for example, with the independent aftermarket or B2C, let's say, marketing. Because if I remember well, you told me once we met online that somehow some OEMs are sharing data which are good for B2B, so meaning fleets and so on. But for the B2C, we are still not having all the coverage. That's correct? Yes, that's correct. So I think in terms of the, you can see it now on the screen, in terms of fleet versus B2C, uh, fleet is currently the most interesting for sure. But this is because um, OEMs can see a short-term short -term win. Uh, the, a lot of leasing companies are starting to have 80 to 90% coverage. 
and in the B2C market, due to the age range of the cars, this is not going to be the case uh, in the near future. 100% in the leasing sector is quite realistic in the next year or two. So that's why um, OEMs start to focus normally on one side and then they are working on, on the B2C side. Uh, I don't think there's any manufacturers that have started with B2C to, and then start with fleet second, but sometimes they start at the same time on fleet and B2C. Uh, Stellantis, for example, offers exactly the same data set uh, on the fleet side as they do to the private customer. So this is the goal in my head that we would reach the stage where we have the same kind of quality on both the fleet side and the B2C side. So that's really interesting because meaning eventually some workshop network which are connected with those uh, drivers, they will be able to see, for example, all the uh, problems they have in the car, all the data that are important for them to eventually market, uh, make marketing and then recall those clients on their workshop, that's correct? Yes, or uh, service management, like with the dentist, you know, you get a reminder, you're supposed to go back, and now they can do this more uh, personalized. We see your car has been driving a lot. Maybe you, you drove from uh, Italy to Norway or the other way around, and uh, you have driven a lot of kilometers in a short amount of time, so they can contact you and check in with you, or even if they see um, a dashboard light is on, um, that can have issues in the future, um, they can tell you or Federal give you code. a warning, exactly, give you a warning and tell you um, you should come by the, the workshop in the next month because if you leave this too long, this can lead to, to another problem in the future. So that's why um, this information is really valuable also for customer retention and uh, creating the best kind of service. Yeah, perfect. So thanks for your data information then. Let's go to somebody which is able to make this uh, marketing uh, strategy, let's say. Because as I said before, sometimes we are trying to wait uh, when the legislation goes further. But as the legislation is quite slow, why don't, cannot we use the data which are already available, platforms which are already live? So, Morten, would you, your company is called Connected Cars, really original name. <laughs> But really easy to remember. The previous one was uh, high mobility, uh, by the way. So with you, what kind of you know, service and platform do you have? And what are you doing already? First time in Denmark, where you are really strong, uh, but not only. So uh, extracting the data, uh, real-time data, which is then uh, processed and can be used for the workshops um, to actually find relevant information, like uh, Katarina was also uh, talking about, sending out service reminders because you have the odometer, there are faulty codes that come in that you can actively reach out to a customer that might have a faulty code or something wrong with the vehicle. So actually proactively reaching out to the customer at the right time with something relevant for them. Could be low batteries as well. We have some examples of it later. Yeah. So, uh, so very, very, very high level. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's what we're showing here in, the, in, in this slide. That we extract the data from, from, a, from a device or getting it from, from, uh, directly from the, from the uh, yeah, OEM uh, uh, API. Um, and then I think we talked a little bit, you mentioned also the thing about what's in for the users. So I think also the OEMs are putting so much effort to having a nice app which do something for the users. But how can you actually populate the data to the workshop so they use it? And that's actually what we've been focusing also with, uh, with the workshop platform. Uh, where you can actually get that information or the workshop, the service managers can get that information in real time and then use it proactively to reach out to the customers. And if I remember well, you are able to you know, increase the loyalty of clients coming back. They are working currently mostly with the dealers which are from the OEMs, but eventually in the future you are able to work with the dependent aftermarket as well. It's, it's really interesting to see, for example, this slide and later on also that the older is the car, somehow you are able still to keep those cars coming back to the dealers, to the OES, but in the future you can, of course, work with anybody else. But tell us this important strategy the dealers are using uh, with you. Yeah, so, uh, so I think there are two things to it. Um, the first thing is, you mentioned authorized versus independent workshops. So the initial connected car started was to work with, uh, with OEMs, so importers or dealers directly. 
because we had to prove the value uh, of the solution. Um, also because initially, because there is a telematics device, the importers or the dealers can p package the cost into the car when they're yeah. selling a new car. So that's eventually also why we started to work with them. But now also with high mobility and these aggregators and getting data directly from from uh, from the from the uh, from the OM API, then it's possible also to do it without the uh, the device. And actually, also since we also have a leasing fit now, a leasing leg now where we um, where we start to work with the leasing uh, workshops, and they also have independent workshops. Yeah. So there we get a much bigger part of the of the independent uh, workshop. So we start to go that. That is part of our, our our future strategy. But very high level, what you see maybe on on on, on the slide before before uh, is just the dashboard that a workshop would see. So the workshop or the service manager would get this information. So in the bottom you can see that these workshops have 15,000 activated cars that's driving around with the device. And at this moment, well, not this moment, <laughs> when this is <laughs> Two taken, days ago. Uh, 29 uh, uh, leads are there for, uh, for an error code uh, that something is, is uh, the lamp is, is blinking within the vehicle. There are 22 that has a low uh, 12 volt battery. Um, so there they can use this information to actually reach out to the customer based on that. And I think the customer also would actually be very help, happy that, uh, that somebody tells them that the battery might die so they don't get out uh, tomorrow morning, cannot get to work. And then the big part of it is, is the service reminders uh, uh, because also, as you mentioned with odometer, you can get the service reminder. And there you can see a little bit on the graph that we, we show that the blue is how many we, we, we actually... Uh, in, this, in this one, if I remember well, also there is about the age on the right side uh, yeah, as so, well. Yeah, so, so if we... Uh, that's fine, we can go to, to, to the next slide because yeah. it's the same thing basically. Yeah, exactly. So on the, right, on, the right, yeah, on the right side, what we basically show is that with or without a connect, connected cast, so whether it's via the OEM data uh, or it's uh, with the device, here is from the car that is from 1 to 12 years old. So the first two, three years is within warranty. They might come back to the workshop, but after year two, three, they do not come back to the workshop. But here, because they are connected and because they can proactively reach out to them at the right time, when it's maybe 10,000 kilometers versus whatever kilometer it is, when the battery is low, when there is a faulty code that, that says something. And that's actually uh, 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 the benefit of the solution. This customer is, 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 is Volkswagen in Denmark. Uh, that has increased uh, the loyalty with more than 50%, particularly in what we call segment two, um, year four to uh, cars that are, that are four to eight years old. Um, yeah, so here, just an example of how it actually works. So here you see on the, on the left side, you see the, the customer view uh, on the app, and the right side you see the dealer view. So it's the same information here, an engine error or a, a lamp is popping up uh, in the dashboard, and then the dealer can see exactly what is that DTC code. Also, all the underlying factors that might happen related to that special lamp, so they actually can know it, first of all, when they come in for service, but also for reaching out, both if it's severe or not. Even if it's not severe, they can reach out to the customer and say, this is a, this is a, a lamp blinking. Don't worry, it's actually not so important but you can keep on driving, it keeps coming up again, then you need to come in, or oh, this is very dangerous, you need to come in. And the driver sees exactly the same information in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in real time. I wish to say that you know, a few days ago you made a demo for me, no? And because you know, we are talking about, you know, in our report we say some solutions which are already real. This is a real platform working every day. It was really interesting to me, you know, I was really engaged during the demo because I've seen so many data, so many informations, really interesting. Of course, so in this moment, more for the OES side, but why not for uh, Frederick and the, all the workshop is taking care of, or others yeah. having this access with so many data that you are not really, we try to show, but it's really difficult to show everything today. I was really caught by this one, for example, low battery warning. They are able to trace the battery of all the cars they are connected with, see, of course, the status, and then later on say, oh, as you just said before, uh, watch out because soon your battery is gonna die, but to come, but these are real data, it's not a mechanic, it just made a check when the car is in the workshop. 
So sorry if I tried, but I was That's trying correct. to show that this is really working more than a lot of times it's more, okay, we have some idea, we are a startup, we're just starting. No, this is really working every day. Yeah, uh, and uh, that, that's, uh, thank you for... Uh, no, no. <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> I will uh, make a bill for gas, you later. But yeah, but that's how it is. Um, <laughs> it's both for the, for the driver. Here is, is the low battery warning, as we said. And uh, here you see seven days average of the 12 volt battery. And, and definitely you can see here that that is something that might be an issue. Um, and again, reaching out, we have a chat function actually. So you can chat directly with the driver and the driver can chat directly to you or even report what kind of lamp it is. So again, to make it convenient for the driver, in real time they see the issues, but also that the workshop and the service manager can actually see what is actually the issue and then proactively reach out to them and say, hey, it might need that you come, need to come in and check the battery. Yeah. So that's the example here. Just the last example is, is related to oil change, similar thing. Um, and the oil change and the service is, of course, based on the odometer. Oil change is also based on the, the, on the data that is read from the canvas system. But for oil change, or at least for service also, we also have some algorithm that, that, uh, that actually calculate based on the driving behavior. Yeah. So it might be in year three, you think it's 45,000, but this car in year three is maybe already at, uh, at uh, in, in, after two and a half years, there's maybe already at 45,000, and plus the driving behavior is a bit reckless, so maybe they need to come in before. Yeah, That's nine months, for example, instead of one year. Yeah, okay. and uh, again, especially when it's year three, four, five, <coughs> then of course it's important for them. But if it's an uh, independent, that's normally the, lower then, the, you know, uh, yeah. the, the older the car, so that would make, make, make benefits from day one, right? Yeah, okay. So I think that's, uh, that's all with you guys. So for me, it was really important to show you that today we can already target cars, connected cars, of course. So we don't need to wait years uh, and legislation. Of course, legislation would be more helpful to force maybe some OEMs which are not ready to work maybe be with the B2C. But thanks a lot for your time, guys. And applause. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>